to say, I'm not going to receive the free gift of salvation. And they made the choice. So you've got to begin to realize that on a technical term or on technon, are you a child of God or are you going to become a son and daughter? Are you going to become one that is led by the Spirit? That when the Spirit talks to you, actually listen and say, I will do. I will do. Then you come to this, and I have to admit this, all these years as a Christian, I never wanted to go in the mission field. Because I thought going on the mission field was going to mean you're going to live in a hot grass hut with snakes and bugs and all of this stuff. And I'm thinking, I can't do that. Okay? And I'm told, Sam, Vicki, you guys would be happy that the snakes are not poisonous. You just can't let them coil around you. So uh, it's not going to be too bad. But the point was, here's the deal. I'm kidding. Here's the deal, though. Whatever God has designed for your life, be it on the mission field or living here, if this is the mission field, or pastoring or doing whatever, if you find God's will for your life, if you say, I'm going to be led by the Spirit and do what He's called me to do, when you choose that path, God knows how you're wired. He knows the things that you enjoy. He's not trying to see. Most people think that Christians don't have any fun. Most worldly people think, well, you just, just don't know what it's like. If you don't get a chance to drink and smoke and do all the stuff the world does, you're just missing out. When you truly are being led by the Spirit, when you are truly grafted into the sonship of God, when you're truly saying, Lord, I'm going to listen to you and go where you want me to go and do what you want me to do, you'll have the best life ever. Okay? Uh, we've all had those little experiences. I mean, I remember when... It was like the other day I was tired and we got, I got a chance to, to chat with somebody and it was like that five minutes of hope begin to see his countenance change and his life begin to change. And I thought, I've heard Copeland say before, but there's no greater high than seeing God's manifest presence moving in someone's life. And it's so true. Find what God's called you to do. <clears throat> be led of your heart. How do you be led by the Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit, He'll put you in situations or plant little things in your life and you'll go, wow. You know, we were, we were talking because, you know, uh, about how the Hiltons came last night. His car broke down in our driveway. Mark and I were trying to, I don't remember, it wouldn't start or something. We're yakking at him, and, and I asked Sam, we're doing a mission trip. And he said, we'll come and play. It's just like that. Well, we were being led by the Spirit and didn't even know it. Just allow God to flow through you. He's a river of life. He flows through you. Now, I'm not telling you God broke his car, because actually, the neat part was his car. Okay, he just left his headlights on. So the good news is this. God wants to change your life. He wants to move in your life. Move from just being, all right, technically I'm a child of God. Technically I'm a churchgoer. Technically I'm a Christian. Step over into, I'm a son and a daughter. I've got some privileges. I've got some opportunity. And I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to work for the Lord. How many know that you've got an opportunity to work for the Lord today? I'll close with this. Wherever you are, whatever opportunity you're in, let the Holy Spirit direct you. Let God bring, use your lips to bring hope. Let God use your lips to bring healing. Let God use your lips to simply buy somebody a cup of coffee. Simply share the love of Christ with somebody. Begin to say, you know what, don't wait till it's over. I had a friend that was doing a lot of mechanical work on my car for a long period of time. Matter of fact, he sold us our original sound system and those speakers. He's had four heart attacks and lays in the hospital with a coma. Do you want to know what a regret that I had? That I didn't share Jesus with him. I think I was doing it through lifestyle, but it always seemed like it just wasn't an opportunity. Well, guess what? He's now out of the coma, and he's in his bed, and he's eating and drinking, and he's going to be fine. But guess what? I'm going to be a path to his door. I'm going to share the good news of the Lord. I don't want to waste those times. I don't want to miss those opportunities. And I don't want him to miss that opportunity. So I just share with you this today, something to ponder. In your life, Technon is a child of God. Technically, you're a child of God. Weos, okay, is one that displays the character of the Father which means you live and you act in Him. We live and move and have our being. We sing the song. We share Jesus. We listen to what God is saying. And the next time offense comes, the next time that trap door is open because it's trying to suck you in, because guess what? The longer He can have you offended, the less you're doing for God. Because God ain't in that trap. So the longer you're in the trap, and it's your right to be in the trap, the longer you're in the trap, the less you're going to be able to go out there and do for your Heavenly Father which is in heaven. Amen.
All right. Father, we just thank you for today. I thank you for your word. Lord, that we would move from just technically being your kids to your kids, Father, living and moving and acting and being part of you. Lord, that we would be sensitive in our spirit. I know today, Lord, everyone is tired and everyone's worked hard, but today, Lord, that we would be sensitive in our spirit to say, Father, show me those areas that I can change. Show me those areas that I can draw closer to you. And we thank you for this. Lord, we thank you for our prayers being answered and the privilege of serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. If you need special prayer...